now at 10. Snow today. Is there more on the way? The snow is done. Now everything is covered in ice. How long will the ice last? When will we see more snow? Your full forecast is coming up. Tonight, a look at the severe storms targeting other parts of the country. Plus, grieving during the holidays. You can't fix their grief, so don't try. But the big part of it, too, is to not ignore it. How to celebrate the season while respecting a loved one's loss. Back up. Back up. But first, mall protesters on the move bring airport traffic to a standstill. We start tonight with a planned diversion by Black Lives Matter. They say they faked out authorities who expected plenty of protesters at the Mall of America. Instead, many hopped the light rail to the airport where protesters had already blocked the entrance. Shut Shut it down. Down. It. Get a light! Traffic and travelers alike were blocked from getting into the airport this afternoon, forcing checkpoints to close at Terminal 2. Their tactics were successful for 45 minutes until police started making arrests. In all, there were four protest-related arrests at the mall and eight people taken into custody at the airport. Boyd Hooper is live tonight with the reaction from both the protesters and the shoppers and travelers who were inconvenienced. Boyd. Rena, the group Black Lives Matter released a statement proclaiming today's actions successful and again demanding the release of video in the police shooting of Jamar Clark. The day far less successful for some of the shoppers here at Mall of America and for some air travelers. No justice, no peace. An afternoon of disruptions for trains, planes, and automobiles. All participants must leave Mall of America property immediately. Heavy police presence at the Mall of America as dozens of stores in the mall's east rotunda closed preemptively, <laughs> raising the eye. You don't go and you disrupt something of some mall shoppers. What's the purpose going to serve? All they're doing is annoying everybody. Protesting and getting arrested is as American as apple pie. But protest organizers say the mall was just a diversion. Prosecute the police! As they boarded light rail for the real target, the airport. Shut Airport police tried to keep protesters from entering Terminal 2. But too many entrances. Too many protesters. And until backup arrived, too few police. As protesters headed toward the ticketing area, the warnings ended. Meantime, on rails and freeways approaching the airport, traffic backed up. I missed my flight with my dad who came from Europe. We missed the flight to Seattle and it affects a couple thousand bucks of travel plans for us and pushes our holiday plans tremendously. Not everyone responded so calmly. Get alive! We're not free. We can't enjoy a, a free life in our society if uh, people can be gunned down, um, arrested, and never come back just because of the color of their skin. Prosecute the police! For one group, justified tactics. For others, a major pre-holiday mess. The security scanners at Terminal 2 were shut down about 45 minutes, causing some delays in departures of Sun Country and Southwest flights. And of course, Rena, this all occurring on one of the busiest travel and one of the busiest shopping days of the year. All right, Boyd Hooper live at Mall of America tonight. Thanks for your report. There's no way to determine the exact amount of monetary impact today's protest had on the mall. Officials there say 80 stores near the east side rotunda were forced to close from 1245 to about 3 o'clock today. Most of them did reopen earlier than expected when the peaceful protesters left or were escorted out by police. Today, Governor Dayton said he was sympathetic of the Black Lives Matter cause, but he says it'll take time and money to adopt legislation to address racial inequities in Minnesota. The governor says he will meet with Black Lives Matter leaders and the NAACP next week. Dayton is proposing $15 million to start and a possible special session to reduce some of the disparities that exist. Legislators will meet in working groups after the holidays to address some of those concerns. In other news, severe weather leaves behind a deadly path of destruction in the south. The Weather Channel is reporting at least three deaths following a tornado outbreak in Mississippi. Meteorologists say 14 tornadoes touched down there tonight. Two other people were killed in Tennessee. In Arkansas, a woman died when a tree fell on her home and trapped, trapped her inside. Winds could be gusty overnight with the chance of even more tornadoes. 
Here at home, we finally saw some snow just in time for Christmas, but Jeff Edmondson's in the backyard with a warning about black ice tonight. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Irina. Yeah, it's really slippery in some spots. When I was heading uh, back into work this evening, my driveway completely covered in ice, my street in my neighborhood completely covered in ice, and expect that to be an issue tomorrow morning, at least for the local streets. The main roads are fine. The freeways appeared to be fine too, but just watch out for this stuff because it's kind of hidden right now. And if areas haven't been treated, you really just can't see it. The snow has moved away from us. We had mild temperatures most of the day. Now we're just below that freezing mark, so everything is completely iced up and will be locked into ice overnight as our temperatures drop down into the teens overnight tonight. Should be dropping down to right around 19 to 20 degrees for that low temperature. And then by tomorrow morning, right around 21 degrees as we start the day at around 10 a.m. So once again, watch out for patchy black ice. The road conditions, the main roads are fine, it looks like. But once again, here in the backyard right now, Rena, I'm kind of doing the twists on the ice because it's, uh, it's, it's icy in some spots. We threw down some salt though in other areas, so it's getting better. But watch out for this stuff. All right, be safe out there. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. A quiet and rainy ceremony in Delaware today as the bodies of six U.S. Air Force Airmen arrive back in the U.S. They include a Plymouth native. All six died in a suicide bomb attack last week in Afghanistan. Before joining the Air Force, 36-year-old Adriana Vorderbruggen grew up in the Twin Cities. She was even a soccer standout at Wyzetta High School. We talked with her former coach. He told us she was a player you always wanted to put on the field, someone who was one of his unsung heroes. He thought that her entering the Air Force made sense at that time and she went about it you know very workmanlike and and did it so it's no surprise to me that when uh, she decided that she was going to go to the air force academy um, that uh, i said boy that was going to be just a perfect fit because she's that type of person Vorderbruggen was one of the first American service members to be married in a same-sex ceremony. Her death in Afghanistan happened a day before the fifth anniversary of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. She leaves behind a wife and a son. Well, this time of year is filled with cheer for many people. Others may be dealing with loss from the loss of a job or the death of a loved one. Grief during the holidays can be very difficult to navigate. Adrian Broadus joins us now with ways to help support those who need it. Hi, Adrian. Good evening to you, Rena. Sometimes we hesitate to ask people dealing with grief how they're doing simply because we don't want to make them feel sad. But grief counselors say ignoring someone else's pain can lead to isolation. <laughs> Joy. <laughs> Love. I'm so cool. Thank you, Mommy. And signs of Christmas. You got a shirt and I think some pants. Are all over the McCory home. <laughs> okay, um. But something is missing. <laughs> My husband died Easter 2014 suddenly from a brain hemorrhage. But Jenny McCory continues the ritual of opening gifts. What is it? Early with her children, Nia and Amani. Frozen. It's a tradition. It's Elsa on it. And it's all blue. That's pretty cool. She and her husband, Casey. That's my favorite color. Started. And you can look at the pictures of them on the wall. This time of year is a reminder that life has changed. This Savage family oh. isn't alone. I think the holidays. Jenny Simmons, program director of Fairview Services, says you can help your grieving friends give the gift of listening. I think it's important to just say, how are you? Or I've been thinking about you. She also says you can encourage your grieving friends to start new traditions and keep some old ones. <laughs> Jenny McCory. Look how cool that is. Still uses the same Christmas tree she and her husband purchased when the girls were younger. <laughs> Despite dealing with loss. God. What else can you be rich in? Love. Rich with the gift of love. Thank you, Mommy. And their father's memory. And Jenny told us her spirits are always lifted when people reach out and say, how are you doing today? And the today is important, Rena, because the grief stage varies from day to day. Good advice. Thank you, Adrian. Well, new tonight, four adults and three kids are homeless following a fire in northeast Minneapolis. The fire started on the second floor of a home in the 1800 block of Polk Street. The family did make it out safely, but one firefighter is being looked at for a burn on his wrist. The cause of the fire is under investigation. 
New information at 10 on a story we first brought you last month. Roseville police say a North St. Paul man and woman are charged with theft after a security camera caught them stealing packages from a family's Roseville home. Investigators say a relative of 34-year-old Jennifer Hampton recognized her from the video and called police. Officers say Hampton confessed and then turned in her partner, 39-year-old Chad Bombach. No charges will be filed against the St. Cloud Hospital security guard who used a stun gun against a patient. The Stearns County Attorney's Office called the guard's actions justified in a report that was released today. The guard used his taser on 50-year-old Danny Hammond back in October after Hammond shot and killed Aiken County Deputy Stephen Sandberg. The report says the stun gun probably sent Hammond into cardiac arrest and despite immediate medical attention, Hammond died. The man who discharged a gun at a Fridley Target store is now facing charges. Police say someone watching the news recognized 28-year-old Seth Milner from the surveillance video and called police. Milner was arrested December 17th in St. Paul for driving a stolen car, possession of narcotics, and possession of a stolen handgun. He then admitted to the gun discharge and will now be transferred from Ramsey to Anoka County Jail to face charges for that incident. Governor Dayton calling on state lawmakers to take action on Minnesota's ban on the federal government's Real ID Act. His plea comes after the Department of Homeland Security denied Dayton's request for an extension to upgrade our driver's licenses. The enhanced security features will be needed to board planes and gain entry to some federal buildings. And beginning to take the steps necessary that could be enacted in a regular session to uh, bring us into the necessary client, uh, compliance with the federal government is just an absolute imperative. The governor says as long as legislators agree to the Real ID conversation before April, there's no need for the public to be worried. Minnesota is among just a few states that have resisted the shift to the enhanced licenses. Well, just in time for your holiday trip, the Transportation Security Administration changed the rules for its full body scanners. The agency now says it will require scans for some travelers rather than allowing the option of a pat down search instead. Passengers, though, can still decline the scan, but they could still be forced to walk through the machine if the TSA thinks it's warranted. Still ahead at 10, interest rates may be on the rise, but there's good news if you're looking for a new mortgage in the new year. Plus an open invitation during the holidays for struggling youth in Minneapolis. And as we head to break, a look at NORAD Santa Tracker. Believe it or not, old St. Nick will be leaving the North Pole in less than four hours to start his trip around the globe. We do have a link for you at carolevena.com so you can track him over the next day. We'll be right back. Home buyers can expect credit standards to ease after the new year that could help affordability in the market, which has suffered under both tight credit and a tight supply of homes for sale. According to Fannie Mae, the share of lenders who expect to ease standards for government-backed loans rose to 16 percent, and the share expecting to tighten standards fell to 2 percent. As 2015 winds down, it's time to bid adieu to vehicles that are going out of production thanks to slow sales. USA Today came up with a list of 19. We're not going to read them all off to you there, but uh, one of the more popular cars taking a departure is the Cadillac SRX, which will be replaced with a new model and a new name. Others include the Honda Accord Cross Tour, Jeep Compass, Jeep Patriot, Mazda 5, Mini Roadster, Mini Coupe, and the Nissan Xterra. There you go. Well, it appears Starbucks is a must for last minute shoppers on Christmas Eve. The coffee chain expects record gift card sales as people pick up stocking stuffers. Last year, Starbucks sold nearly two and a half million gift cards. The National Retail Federation says gift cards are the most requested item for the ninth straight year. Everyone loves a gift card, especially if it's for caffeine, Jeff. Yeah, uh, you know, as long as you don't lose the gift card. <laughs> that's true. That's always well, a big positive. Thing. Yeah, you got to think positive, definitely. Or, you know, the nice thing now, gift cards don't expire like they used to many years ago. That was always a really big bummer. Today we're looking at, uh, we had temperatures that were above freezing. We had snow and rain, now ice. Temperatures are now below freezing. As we look ahead to tonight, we'll stay below freezing and that'll continue into tomorrow. A little windy. Those winds are out of the west. It's bringing in that dry air and it's also bringing in the colder air. So it feels like it's around 17 degrees outside when you factor in that wind chill this evening. But it's actually just going to continue to feel colder and colder by tomorrow morning where our wind chills will feel like they're closer to about 9 degrees in the morning. So 
it'll feel even colder as we start the day tomorrow. Here goes the snowfall just starting to move out of Eau Claire, which is great to see. Still a lot of areas though that have the mixture though, and it's part of this larger storm system that's dominating really the eastern half of the country where temperatures have been basically near record highs. There's some spots, for example, in New York, where the temperature has already set the record right now at 61 degrees for the high temperature as we look ahead to tomorrow. Their high temp on Christmas Eve for tomorrow could be warmer than it was on July 4th. That's wild to think. So this is the big storm system. Still some severe weather with it this evening. Here's all the tornado reports. A lot of them. Very rare to see this in late December. Sadly, there were some fatalities with it. The good news is that the storm system is weakening and there shouldn't be as big of a threat for big storms tomorrow down to the south. Travel wise tomorrow should be OK, but if you are traveling into Iowa, some snow possible. A weak clipper system is going to move down to our south. Not going to impact Minnesota, but it is going to impact Iowa where they could have a quick one to two inches of snowfall. So nothing major, but just enough to make the road slick for a couple of hours during the daytime tomorrow. So plan on that afternoon tomorrow if you are traveling south. But anywhere in Minnesota will be dry for our Christmas Eve. Things will be good. But then into Christmas Day, of course, there goes Santa. We'll also have some more clouds developing. And this is part of the next storm system as we look at the longer range forecast. So let's check this out here. For the next seven days, we're looking at highs in the 30s at least for tomorrow and Friday. Not really seeing a big chance for any major snow during the daytime on Christmas Day, but Christmas Day night after sunset, so let's say after 8 o'clock, we could see some snow starting to move in from the south, and that'll continue into Saturday. So let's talk about that real quick. Here's a storm system from today that moves away. Here's that snow for tomorrow in Iowa that moves through in the afternoon. And then here comes the next one for Saturday. This will start up early Saturday morning. We'll see the snow develop. I'm expecting around one to three inches across southern Minnesota, and that does include the Twin Cities as we look ahead to Saturday. So once again, there is where we are right there for that snow chance Sunday and into Monday. Colder with highs in the 20s, staying in the 20s on Tuesday. Wednesday around 23 degrees. Notice those lows will be sitting down in the single digits as we look ahead over the next couple of days. So that's what we'll just kind of have to keep in mind. One other thing to keep in mind too, Rena, I just was kind of doing it as I was walking to my place. You have to walk flat footed uh, with this ice outside. You can't walk heel to toe anymore. Got to be flat footed. All right. Either that or get some treads. Better yeah. treads on your shoes. Yeah, but you should get those. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Well, there's just eight days left in the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign. The agency has raised $8.2 million, but it does need $3.4 million more to keep all the services in place for families over the next year. Red Kettles will be packed up tomorrow, but you can still mail in a check or donate online right up through December 31st. Well, as many of us prepare to celebrate Christmas with our families, a Minneapolis homeless shelter opened its doors for struggling young people tonight. YouthLink hosted its holiday party where they treated guests to a free dinner, some fun activities, and of course, a visit from Santa. The nonprofit's main focus is to provide hope to homeless youth and help them become self-reliant. Volunteers say they look forward to this party every year. You got a lot of youth in here. They're not on the streets. They they occupy, they're doing something. They can be in trouble right now, but instead, youthfully give us the place to come and relax ourselves and just take it easy. More than three dozen people volunteered for tonight's event. YouthLink helps people between the ages of 16 and 23 years old to secure basic needs and find work. Coming up in sports, the Timberwolves take on one of the best teams in the NBA. Plus, a Minnetonka High School senior shares her recipe for success in the hockey rink. Sports is next. CARE 11 Sports from the Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine Sports Desk. If it weren't for the success the Golden State Warriors have been having this season, we'd probably be hearing more, a lot more, about the San Antonio Spurs team. They are silly good, 25-5 and five now on the season after blitzing the Timberwolves here tonight at Target Center. Tyus Jones, just back from the D-League, gets his first career basket as a pro in the first quarter. The point guard finishing with a half dozen. San Antonio does it in the paint tonight. David West getting the inside hoop for two of his 13. Wolves get some razzle-dazzle. Jones to Muhammad to Zach Levine for the finish. He scores 17 in the 25-point loss. 
as the home struggles don't seem to be letting up anytime soon for our mighty T-Wolves. Not better at the barn. Gophers hosting UW-Milwaukee tonight. Oh, Patino. Carlos Morris finishing the break here. Gophers take their first lead of the game in the second half. He scores two dozen, but the Panthers, UW-Milwaukee, too much tonight. J.J. Panask with the tip in as they beat the Gophers 74-65. to Get this, Minnesota's fourth loss in their last five games. She's a surefire superstar. Tonight, Ryan Shaver introduces us to one of the best high school players in the state of hockey that you'll soon be hearing about. I remember when I was little, my dad brought me out to the pond to skate, and I didn't want a stick. I didn't want a chair to hang on to. Flash forward a decade, and that same will to succeed is stronger than ever for Minnetonka senior Presley Norby. Play mean checkers or anything, like pond outside when it doesn't mean anything. Like, I want to win. I'm super competitive. It's that competitive nature that makes Norby one of the state's best and most decorated hockey players. From a state title in 2013 to a gold medal last year with the U.S. women's under-18 national team. Anytime you put on the USA hockey jersey, it's a blessing and an honor. But the ultimate honor came just last month. I was a little nervous because they kind of pulled me aside and were like, can we talk to you? And I was like, oh, sure, I hope I didn't do anything wrong. After an injury left an open spot on the U.S. national team, Norby was chosen to step in during their trip to Sweden for the Four Nations Cup. At first, I was really intimidated. Not only was Norby the only high schooler, she was playing alongside 11 Olympians. Playing with Olympians is always something like, oh, they're so good, they're so big, strong. And, but really, I just like looked up to them, and they really brought me to the team. Since returning from Sweden, Norby's game has taken another step forward, scoring goals at will, <laughs> including four in one game against rival Wyzetta. I think there's just another level of confidence that she feels coming back to high school hockey is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit easier than the women's national team. But for now, the only team Norby cares about is this one and bringing one more banner back to Minnetonka. Getting to that game and Pulling out the W with my best friends would mean a lot. In Minnetonka, Ryan Schaefer, Cure 11 Sports. That's terrific. It's un unbelievable what that international play will do to confidence. It's pretty terrific. Well, clearly, you know, it is a little harder than high school, apparently. It's a big deal. She's, a, <laughs> she's kind of a big deal, but she's, she's playing it cool. Yes, yeah, she is. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, yeah. Eric. Well, coming up, the Timberwolves warming up the holiday season with a unique contest for fans. We'll be right back. Before we go, the Timberwolves and their fans got into the holiday spirit with an ugly sweater night at Target Center. These are just some of the ugly creations that people sported with pride. That's not so ugly. Fans who participated were eligible to win tickets for a future. Look at that guy. That guy's the one that won right there with the two horses. They were able to win grand prizes like tickets to future games and autographed <laughs> basketball. The fun continued during halftime with holiday karaoke. John the Stallion, they were calling that guy with the two horses. and. He took home the big prize tonight. So congratulations to them. Very cute. Good effort, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you all back here tomorrow.